Hello. Well, I had a couple of breakdowns yesterday. This is the main one we're going to work on today. It's a NTSC uh, SLO320 Betamax video recorder. Now, you don't get a lot of these in the UK. It's Betamax NTSC, but it runs at the very first speed used on Betamax. In UK land, Betamax ran at one speed. In NTSC uh, lands, uh, USA and Japan mainly, uh, it w could run at three different speeds. And typically, a machine would run at uh, speeds two or three. Some two and three machines played back the very early beta one speed. Not many. This machine is beta one only because it's intended for sort of semi-professional use. And this has been working fine and I was using it yesterday and then it suddenly started acting up and switching itself on and off very rapidly and then just stopped. So we've now got the situation where I can't even eject it. So we'll work on that. But the other thing just before I mention, uh, go into this is to mention what else went wrong yesterday and went wrong in a big cloud of very smelly smoke. I have a HP Z800 uh, workstation PC and big cloud of smelly smoke. It really did stink but it kept working. Uh, so that implies it's filter capacitor on power supply because it was still running. So it's a sort of modular power supply that slides out. It's a huge thing. And indeed the uh, filter capacitor was burnt to a crisp. Uh, you can see it here. Um, it had burnt up inside. Uh, <laughs> really quite a mess. So um, I fought my way through the sign label saying no serv serviceable components inside and uh, dismantled the power supply and it's now in a semi dismantled state. You can see there a bit of the um, insulation had been burnt up by the capacitor underneath it and it was there. 2.2 microfarad uh, should be a X2 rated uh, safety capacitor. No other damage seems to have occurred so I didn't have that value in stock. I've got some smaller ones but I thought I should fit it, fix it properly. So I've ordered one of them and no doubt that'll work when I've replaced the capacitor. Right. So um, back to this uh, Betamax machine. Let me show you what it's doing and perhaps we can try to infer what's going wrong. I don't have the schematics for it, so uh, tricky because I don't know at the moment if it's a mechanical or electronic fault. Right, let's get stuck in. Right, this video recorder is 120 volt only. Um, I've set up a, a transformer for that. So let me just show you the machine briefly before we get too stuck in. Um, what's interesting at the back here, <laughs> weird set of connectors. You can tell it's for sort of semi-professional use. It's got this uh, connector, is that EIAJ connector? Seen that on a few machines in the past. And this slightly weird remote control connector. Uh, but it does have a modulator, so it's got RF out. And that's an F connector, as is typical in USA. And for some reason mains out, perhaps to drive the monitor and video in and out and the audio this is really strange the audio is presented on um three and a half mil jack connectors instead of phono so heaven only knows why so i would made up a cable for that purpose but uh we're in a long way from having it run anyway and this mains cable big thick thing for some reason so the beta one tape speed, you got about an hour out of an L500 tape. And the idea was that it's higher quality than anything else. Uh, and they did carry on making beta one speed machines later than this. Now, this uh, is something of an early generation machine, but it is light touch because of course it has that remote control socket. But I've seen a similar deck in, I think it was an SL8000 PAL portable but that had piano key operation. So there's a lot of solenoids in here which kind of take the place of the buttons. At the moment, if I power this up, press this big on button, press the eject button, it clonks, but it's not ejecting. So uh, let's take it apart and see what we can find. Right, it suddenly started itself up and it switched itself off again. Well, that was weird. That was weird for a start. And it's still not ejecting the tape. And it's doing that weird thing. If I eject it by pushing on a lever here, I can eject. 
And now I'll make it think there's a tape going in because there's a tape detection arm here. And then I believe it will lace up. That's okay, but it paused. I don't know if you heard that. It just momentarily stuttered during the lace up. Let's press play. Nothing. So it believes there's a tape in there, but it won't do anything. That light's just gone out. If I let go of that, it starts spinning up again, which is just nonsense. That light's, what is that light supposed to do? Don't know. If I press eject, it's trying to eject, but it's stuck. And let me show you why. I'll get you a little bit closer. There's a lever here which detects when it's fully laced. And if I tell it there's a tape in there and pull that lever away, it'll try to lace and the motor spins and the belt slips a bit because it's trying to make sure that it's fully laced. So that's okay. But when I hit eject, it's getting stuck unless I pull that away. I'll do that again. Eject. I'm not going to do it now. I'll try that again. So I'll press eject and then I'll tug this away as soon as I hear that operating. It's all over the place. There we go. If I pull that away, then it unlaces, but it still won't eject. And now it's laced up again. What is going on? It's very confused. I'm very confused. It's not working, it's not responding consistently to this switch. Maybe that switch is dirty. I don't think it's that. Why is it not ejecting now? It seems to be multiple faults. If I press any of the deck functions, nothing happens. Except sometimes eject works or unlace. And then if I do that, that's correct. Let's pop a tape in, see if I can get that to do anything. And now is it playing out? Right, so it's laced. That's correct. Press deck functions, nothing. It's just madness. Eject, nothing. I don't know what to make of it. Uh, let's have a look underneath in case there's any uh, switches that could be uh, contaminated. Lots of solenoids. Lots and lots of solenoids. You can see those. Four solenoids there, which kind of take the place of the push buttons on the mechanical deck. Ah, there's a micro switch here on the board. Oh, there's several micro switches on the board. That doesn't sound very good. I think that micro switch is acting up. I'm sure I'm making good contact. These are very sharp probes, and I'm pushing them well into the solder. That switch. Is not happy. Let's check this one. So that's the normally closed, normally open, that's correct. That's the normally closed position, that's right. It's just not happy. Normally open section's not working properly. And normally closed section's not working properly. We need to get that micro switch out. Right, this is my suspect micro switch. It may react differently now it's been heated up by the soldering iron. But uh, let's just uh, have another look. So I think this is the normally normally open. It's working a bit better now. And normally closed. Yeah, it's not as positive as you'd like, is it? Trouble with micro switches I find is I never have the right type. That's very similar, but for no lever. 
and I don't think I can add a lever to it. So I'll have to uh, see if I can take it apart and clean it. If not, I'll have to get one from somewhere. I'm not going to be able to get it apart. So I'm going to squirt a little bit of deoxid in the uh, lever, well, the, the, the actuator here, and see if it'll clean up the contacts enough for us to prove that that is what the fault is. Uh, and then, if so, I can go ahead and order a new switch. No, that's uh, not managed to penetrate enough to actually do the job, so uh, I need to solve this problem. Right, I put the switch through the ultrasonic tank, uh, along with that circuit board from the PC. I'm thinking the loading slipping might actually be the belt itself, so let's um, change that loading belt. Quite easy to change. Let's see if I've got something like that. And it does feel like that belt's out of shape. It's not in good condition. Okay, I have a belt here. It's actually intended for a Sanyo beta, but uh, I think that should do it. If that's too long, I'll try a different one, but that feels better. Still not getting the eject function, but let's uh, bypass that. Loading, good. The main duck function's worked, but it kicked out of play, I think due to this uh, tape slack sensor here, which is fine, because of course it would have been. Right, let's try eject. Oh. Well, it unlaced, but didn't eject. So it's still not doing that bit. But it unlaced properly. So apart from the lack of eject, the machine appears to be working now. Oh, during that eject, did it operate that take-up spool? I didn't check that. Or during the unlace, I better check that, hadn't I? Put tape in, pseudo tape with my finger. Now eject. No, it's not driving this take-up spool. It's not driving the spool, so it'll be leaving tape everywhere. That's not good. Yeah, since fast forward works, we know that mechanically it can drive that, so uh, there's some other reason it wasn't operating that spool. But at least the eject is working properly now. Well, the unlace is working properly, apart from that. Oh well, a little bit of progress. I was looking at the eject mechanism and this pin fell out of the machine. That's interesting. Need to work out where this pin comes from because I think that's key to the whole problem. Right, it's spare parts day. We have in uh, for the uh, computer some 2.2 microfarad filter capacitors. They look large. I'm not sure they're going to fit the PCB, so that's going to be a laugh. And we have two micro switches for the video recorder with levers, but they're slightly different to the original, so I hope they fit and work. Right, let's uh, start, I think, with this computer power supply, because that'd be a quickie, hopefully. So this is the power supply, and it still stinks. <laughs> In order to gain good access to it, I had to cut the wires from the power feed. Couldn't see how else to uh, get it apart. So I'm going to have to uh, resolder those to the board. Now, one thing that does worry me is this part of the board got completely covered in smoke so I had to um, stick it in my ultrasonic tank and clean it out and that's worked but what worries me is that that's a relay uh, and I hope there's not any trapped solvent in there it's not a great deal I can uh, do about that so uh, these capacitors look much bigger than the original one that uh, came off this bit of PCB. So that's going to be challenging to uh, fit. Okay, I've reassembled this power supply. So um, as the capacitor was much bigger than the original, I've uh, had to put wires down to the PCB. But uh, that's all insulated, so it's done to a good safety standard. 
and refitted the uh, supply connections to here. We fitted all the screws and the power LED. So all I've got to do is reassemble the case um, and uh, put it back in the computer and try it. Okay, I've not tried it before. Here's the goes great switch on. Looking good. Good, the uh, Z800 workstation is now fully working. It's all booted up and ready to go. I have a theory that uh, the problem might have been at least in part caused by the fact it was running on the UPS that was underrated for this uh, PC. Now this puts out a pseudo sinusoidal waveform and it might be that that uh, capacitor was working very hard uh, trying to absorb some of the peaks uh, in that waveform. It may have been quite rough and so more current was flowing through the capacitor than normally would and with it already being an old component any internal failings would have gen generated more heat. So it might be the UPS was at least in part caused uh, the cause of that capacitor failure. Uh, so I'll be removing this from the circuit. So this is the uh, panel that has the micro switches. There's one there and one here. This is the one I've been having trouble with but I'm inclined to change them both if the replacement micro switches are a good fit. Comparing the original micro switch to the replacement the only problem seems to be that the lever is at a slightly different angle so I may have to bend the lever down slightly otherwise it might actuate too early. Having carefully uh, refitted the board of course the position is very important because the uh, actuators have to meet with the micro switches on the other side. Um, I will give it a whirl. I actually don't think it's going to work but let's try. Straight away something's wrong. It shouldn't be running up the head now. Still not getting any jacked. I can't even operate the eject lever so it must be laced up. Not right at all. It's even worse. That might not be a fault. You see you should never have the position where it's laced and there's no tape in there and because it doesn't have microprocessor control that might be uh, just what it does. Let's press eject from this point. It should now unlace. Struggling aren't we? Well it shouldn't be running the motor now. The head motor now. It's all over the place. Oh well here it is. Monday the 12th of July and we have to face the huge uh, disappointment that last night, after fitting to the two micro switches, my beta video record is still not working. So here's what it's doing now. If I power it up, the head drum spins and the green light's not coming on. That might mean it's suffering from a dew sensor failure. If I uh, put it down as though there's a tape in it, so I put my finger on there, it laces up. That's what it should do but now nothing else happens. So I'm still suspecting a dew sensor error, but I just don't know. I don't have the user manual. I don't have this service manual. So I really need some help on this one. I'm going to have to put it to one side until I can get some uh, more information on it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, seeing us work a little bit on that uh, workstation computer and also this beta video recorder, but I really need more information to fix this. Uh, in the meantime, please remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll uh, do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Yeah.